Good morning, everyone. First off, I just want to start by saying thank you to Stages for having me here today and for the opportunity to present um, our work. My name is Rachel Hart. I'm a third year general surgery resident at uh, Guthrie Robert Packer Hospital in Sayre, Pennsylvania. This morning, I'm going to be presenting our study of the role of cholecystectomy for hyperkinetic gallbladder, which is a retrospective cohort study in a rural hospital. There we go. So uh, before I begin, uh, I have nothing to disclose, and neither do the other authors of uh, this study. So to begin, biliary dyskinesia, it's defined as a functional disorder uh, without any structural or mechanical cause for biliary pain. And this is used um, with the Rome 4 criteria. The traditional thinking is that a gallbladder ejection fraction of less than 35% is considered biliary dyskinesia, considered abnormal, while any ejection fraction above 35% is considered normal. The standard of care for biliary dyskinesia and for low ejection fractions is pretty well studied, and the standard of care is cholecystectomy. It actually makes up about 10 to 20 percent of indications for cholecystectomy in adults and up to 50 percent in the pediatric population. So while that's pretty well studied, there's much less consensus on the management of patients who have a high ejection fraction. And there are very few studies in the literature that um, have studied the role for cholecystectomy in those with hypergonadic gallbladder. So that brings us to the purpose of our study. So what we wanted to do was to examine the rate of symptom resolution in patients with hyperkinetic gallbladder, which we defined as an uh, ejection fraction of 80% or greater, following cholecystectomy. So we performed a retrospective chart review. We looked at consecutive patients between January 2015 and May 2021 who underwent an elective cholecystectomy at Robert Packer Hospital in Sayre, Pennsylvania. In order to be included in this study, the patients needed to have no evidence of cholelithiasis on either preoperative imaging or on postoperative pathology. In addition to that, they required a preoperative HIDA scan, which showed an ejection fraction of 80% or greater. So what did we find with this? We had a total of 48 patients identified. Our mean and median age was around the same, around 41, 42 years old. The majority of our patients were female, 83%. And the mean and median uh, gallbladder ejection fraction of our patient population, again, very similar, around 87%. In terms of outcomes, on final pathology, 68.8% of our patients had signs of chronic cholecystitis on final pathology. In terms of preoperative HIDA scan, 58.3% of patients had reported that they had symptoms when CCK was infused. Of note here, 31% um, of our patients, there was no reported absence or presence of symptoms. And in terms of our main outcome of symptom resolution, we found that 95. 9% of patients experience symptom resolution at their post-operative visit. So what does this all mean? So we found that the vast majority um, of patients with hyperkinetic gallbladder in our study improved with cholecystectomy. And our symptom resolution rate of 96% is very similar to the symptom resolution rate of patients with low ejection fraction who undergo cholecystectomy. Studies who have looked at cholecystectomy in low ejection fractions have found symptom resolution rates of 91 to 98%. So our rate of 96% is very similar to that. Also, almost 70% of our patients had chronic changes on final pathology, which again challenges this notion that any ejection fraction above 35% is normal. And perhaps we need to start thinking about very high ejection fractions as a little less normal. <laughs> so in terms of the strengths and limitations of this study, one of the, our strengths is that 
as I had mentioned before, there's very few studies that look at the role of cholecystectomy in patients with high ejection fraction. And to our knowledge, this study is one of the largest sample sizes that has looked at this patient population. We also had a 100% follow-up rate on post-operative visits so that we can accurately report our main outcome of symptom resolution. In terms of limitations, one of the main limitations of this study is that it is a retrospective study, so it has its um, limits in that perspective. Of course, we are limited to the information that's available in our electronic medical record. And to add on to that, I had, as I had mentioned in the results, about 30% of patients didn't have any presence or absence of symptoms recorded with CCK infusion. And the reason that I mention that is because CCK has been highly implicated in the um, recent hypotheses for the pathophysiology of hyperkinetic gallbladder. So what we could potentially do in the future, future areas for research could look at whether the presence of symptoms with CCK infusion preoperatively on HIDA scan, could that be a good prognostic factor to identify patients who would benefit from cholecystectomy? Again, it could be a future area for research with this. So in conclusion, at our institution, we found that the vast majority of patients had symptom resolution following cholecystectomy. And what this suggests is that surgical management should strongly be considered in the management of patients who have these biliary colic symptoms and have a high ejection fraction. Thank you so much for listening this morning. I will be happy to take any questions.